Well, hello there, people. I tell you what, I've missed doing this. It's been a few weeks, I've been out of pocket, I know, I apologize, I like to try to load at least a video a week, and I think it's been close to three since I've loaded one. But this episode, or this video, or whatever you wanna call these things, is gonna kinda of be about why I've been absent for the last three weeks. To give you a little backstory before we get going, I was having some bottlenecks in my workflow when it comes to editing. You can probably see from behind me that there are some changes in my editing workstation. I'm not gonna get into too much detail because this video is gonna be mostly about that, but that's where I've been. I was without a computer, and without a computer, it's very hard to edit and it's very hard to post stuff to YouTube. I apologize, but I'm back. And I really think this new workstation is going to be much more efficient, which is going to allow me to hopefully get more videos out than before. I'm going to shoot for two a week and hopefully maybe even ramp it up to three a week eventually. We'll see. It depends on how well this all works. The plan was to get it all done within like a week and film it so that there was no real gap in my YouTube posting. But the first thing I tried didn't work and it kind of bombed out and then I had to redo the whole thing again. So let's go back a couple weeks at the video that was originally supposed to be posted of the first revision of the rework of the workstation before I had to rework it again. And I just realized that was a lot of reworks. But yeah, let's go back in time about two weeks. I know what you're probably all thinking. Jeremy, you had a nice office. It was all crispy and clean. There was no wires anywhere and it looked good. What happened? But there's a reason, just stay with me here. We're doing a little upgrading, putting up some curve monitors. Instead of doing a three wide setup, I'm doing two curve monitors and I'm gonna put the uh, iMac up above. So I figured the last video went well seem pretty popular. I'm gonna have to basically take off the old mounts and patch the wall because where those were aren't gonna work with these wider monitors. Um, remount them, move the Mac up. So there's gonna be lots of mounting of unmounting, mounting, wire hiding, and getting this back to looking crispy. Cause I don't know if you can see it back there. What used to be a very neat and tidy desk is now just a hot frickin' mess. We'll see how the day goes. Hopefully we can get it done today. That'd be nice. All right, I think that's everything unplugged and we can move this whole desk out. Give me a little bit of room so I can see what the heck's going on. Slow and steady wins the race, you know? One thing I have found with anchors like this is you can try to pull them out, but usually you dimple the drywall up and stuff. I found the easiest thing to do usually is just get a screwdriver and push them through like that. It's gonna leave a hole, obviously, but uh, I found it's easier to patch where if you pry it out, it tends to buckle all the drywall and uh, it just makes it even harder. As far as patching goes, this stuff right here, I don't know if that's focusing, I can't see the camera right now. It's a DAP patching paint, lightweight spackling. Great for small repairs. Um, this might be kind of pushing the boundary of how big of a hole, I mean that hole's almost the size of my pinky, uh, how big of a hole you can patch with this stuff, but it's really easy to use, it's good to work with, it dries really, really fast, um, and it's not very expensive. It's great stuff, so I highly recommend it. Lunch break. The key there is you get the onion rings, and you put the onion rings on the Whopper. Pro tip. Pro tip at getting fat. If 
you need any instruction on doing this, right here, making these pass-throughs for the wires and the uh, plate covers. Please reference my last video, because in my last video I talked about cutting the holes in the walls uh, in these plate covers. Here. This is the second time now I realized that my headphone jack was not plugged all the way in to for my uh, for my mic. So the audio on the whole first part of this video very legitimately could sound like absolute ass. Jeez, sorry folks, sorry. I mean, yeah, you could edit on one monitor, but why would you edit on one monitor when you can edit on that? All right, so we've done a little time warp here. Things are looking a lot better. I didn't want to bore you guys with every little detail of everything I did because I did a more detailed review of hanging these things or hanging monitors and whatnot in a video a couple months ago and I didn't want to just do the same video again. So I did want to show you this though because this was a little different than last time. I, I hid all the wires. And the one thing that was driving me nuts was the speaker wires. They were going straight behind the speaker. So when you were in front of the desk, you couldn't see them because the speaker was blocking them. But when I sat here, I could see them out of the corner of my eye going around to the back of the desk, which was really bugging me. See, like you can see that one. See the wire, right? It was making my OCD itch. Just drilled a hole through the desk and put them straight down behind. See that? So yeah, so that way, um, it's a little neater looking. I mean, it, it you can still see wires if you get all the way around beside, but I think from most angles, it's a lot neater looking and it almost completely hides the wires. So I got these little grommets uh, on, I guess they're called grommets. Yeah, white desk grommet. They're like one inch grommets on Amazon. What you do is you, you drill your one inch hole in the desk and then you have somewhere to run your wire through to hide it. And then to make it neater, uh, I put the grommet in there just to make it look a little cleaner. So yeah, so I'm gonna do the second one now. Figured I would show you guys how I did it, just in case you wanted to know, because I didn't cover that on the first video. Try not to be repetitive here, new information. So there's my mark. You obviously want to measure this out because once you drill a hole, this is where your speaker is kind of stuck and this makes a huge mess. So just get ready to have to vacuum some stuff up. One inch paddle bit. All right, and that is most of the way. What I've done is I've now hit this. If you don't have anything below your desk, you won't have this problem. You can just drill straight through. Like with my keyboard, there was nothing under it. Straight through. All right, so yeah, hole goes clean through and into kind of dark, but you see it back there in that back corner. So now I'm gonna drill a hole in the top back of this for the wire to go through. All right, so I just drilled that. Now there is a hole coming through the top and then out that back hole right there. And I have a whole bunch of damn sawdust to clean up. I mean, a lot. It is all in that damn drawer. No one said hiding wires was easy, folks. I mean, you could just go the easy route and leave wires hanging everywhere and that's perfectly acceptable. I'm a little OCD and weird with the wires. Cleanup done for the most part. So now all we gotta do, route these wires through here, pop in the grommet, Bob's your uncle. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. is your end result. Let me get out of the light here. 
you see that? Ryan's routed down through the drawer from like here all the way around. Even when you're here, you see no wire. So yeah, that's about as close to the wireless look as you can get without having wireless speakers. All right, another time warp. We are pretty much done with the room now though. Just go over a couple quick things. That's the new desk. New curved 34 inch monitors. Now the computer up at the top, instead of it being three wide, changed out my keyboard, my mouse, added some speakers for better sound. SD card reader, I already had that under here, it was way over here though and it was in the way so I moved it over. I added a USB 3 port so I wouldn't have to reach around back and a headphone jack uh, so I wouldn't have to reach around for that. Still got to finish up this and I'll get this corner done before I do the tour. Hid all the wires pretty effectively I think. You can't really see any wires for anything other than that one, which obviously I had to bring one. All right, er, stop, pump the brakes. Let's stop there for just, just a second. At this point, I had the, the new iMac. It was much beefed up over my old one. And that was the point to where my head about exploded. This isn't the biggest bag over the head punch in the face I ever got. God damn it! Because <laughs> I thought it looked cool too. I thought everything looked good. It was all set up. It looked nice. And then I was horribly, horribly let down. That sack of monkey shit he is! Hallelujah! Holy shit! Where's the Tylenol? This new one had a much faster processor, uh, flash drive, everything that was going to speed up the workflow and allow me to edit a lot more efficiently. And it was a much faster computer. Uh, I got it hooked up and I mean, it was blazing fast. You click something, it opened. It was, it was great. When I would scrub footage or uh, do any rendering in Premiere Pro, the fan would run like full speed, which led me to start uh, monitoring the temperature while I was doing this to see what was going on. And the, the processor was just getting really hot, but doing a lot more research on the IMAX and a lot of people edit on these. So before everybody gets crazy in the comments and loses their mind, I know a lot of people edit on iMac. A lot of the stuff that I've read and a lot of the rendering tests and whatnot that I, I've researched on YouTube, the iMacs, because of their small form factor, being as condensed as they are, do tend to run hot. The computer did do what it was supposed to do and speed the fan up and cool the processor off and allow it to do what it needed to do. But I just couldn't deal with the fan noise and the risk of all that heat long term having a bad effect on the computer. Oh, and that's a side note, uh, I could not get it to heat up near as bad in Final Cut Pro because Final Cut Pro is, you know, kind of optimized to run a little better on a Mac. Uh, Adobe Premiere Pro though, that fan noise though, ooh, Lord. So anyway, ended up returning that and then going for what I had originally kind of thought about, which was a Mac Pro. And again, there's a lot of debate about Mac Pros and Macs and all this stuff, so please, anybody that's gonna go haywire in the comments, just, just calm down. Opinions are like assholes, everybody's got one, okay? The fact of the matter is, it's got server grade components in it, runs cool, the fans are very quiet and efficient, and the thing is, whether you agree with Mac and how much they charge for their computers, the thing is a workhorse and it's meant to work in a high workload environment day after day after day. The problem going over to Mac Pro is the iMac was one of, was the computer and one of my screens, so then when I decided to go to the Mac Pro, I also had to then come up with a solution for my third monitor, had to rework all that, redo the mount, wait for the new computer. And while I did not film all of that because I was pretty damn frustrated at that point, um, that's kind of the skinny on how things turned out the way they did. So here is what we ended up with after all the turmoil. 
Uh, pretty much uh, everything stayed the same during the second revision. Uh, same monitors that I changed to, same keyboard, mouse, speakers. The main difference is I had to change this. Obviously I lost my monitor up here, so this is now, instead of being an iMac, a 32 inch BenQ 4K monitor. Uh, and the other main difference is the fact that I now have an iMac, or I'm sorry, a Mac Pro over here instead of the computer being in the screen up above. But other than that, everything kind of stayed the same, and even though it was kind of a pain, I'm pretty happy with the end result, really. Can't complain. So, yeah, so that's the deal. Um, like I said, that was just kind of a brief look at the office. Um, I'm going to have a more in-depth kind of look at things coming up. And I think that's it. But yeah, it's been great being back. I'm glad I'm back on the horse. And we will see you guys very soon.